Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the C programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about some of the memory allocation functions available, or rather functions that allow us to ask for memory, whether from the heap or from the stack with the alloca or alloc a function, which we haven't previously looked at in the series. So with that said, we're going to continue on the theme of some of the previous lessons, which you can find in the description below. But with that said, let's go ahead and look at some of the new memory functions and go ahead and show you what they do. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and here do is just go ahead and show you the man page here for one of our first functions, which we're going to take a look at. And this is called calloc. So what's the difference between that and what we've previously looked at well early into this series, which was the memory allocation function malloc, which requests memory on our heap. Now, the difference with calloc or calloc, as it'll often be called, is that the memory that we ask for is set to zero by default. Okay, so this is a nice little guarantee for us that the operating system's either going to look for a place in memory where it might have a bunch of zero allocated memory for us, or otherwise just zero out all the memory, perhaps using a function like memset, for instance. And again, this guarantee that the memory is going to be zeroed out is often nicer for us to have because then we don't have to worry about there being garbage in the memory or perhaps even sensitive information that could be left over. So with that said, let's just go ahead and look at an example first of calloc or calloc, and then we'll go ahead and look at some of the other member functions that we haven't previously looked at. All right, so what I've got set up for us is a little file here. So again, we're going to start with uh, calloc or calloc here, which allocates memory and zero fills the byte. So let me go ahead and scroll down to the example here uh, for today's lesson. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just create a character pointer here for eight bytes. And again, with these memory examples, since a character is just one byte in memory, that's often why we'll use this as an example. So we can go ahead and see that with the C allocate function here, I'm taking eight uh, bytes that I want to allocate and the size of, well, the character that I am initializing which is just one byte here. So let me go ahead and bring up the function here just so we can again see this. Here we'll see that this is the size or the number of variables here, and then this is the size of the actual thing that we want to allocate. So if I make this an integer, for instance, this would be size of four, and this would give me eight uh, zero initialized integers. Okay, so that's how this function works. Again, with something like malloc, if I go ahead and scroll up, it's just asking for size in terms of bytes. And let's go ahead just to look at the documentation here, just so we can see that here. And it's really, again, a more clear um, allocation of memory for an array of the number of elements and the size of each of those elements that we're allocating into memory here. Okay, so it's a little bit of a different interface that we have. You certainly could write your own malloc function that just mem sets all the bytes to zero and treats everything um, as a uh, character, for instance, that would be fine, but we have the calloc function otherwise for doing this. And again, it's kind of nice to split these into two parameters, so it's a little bit clearer, but anyway, that's the interface. So what I'm going to do in this example is just go ahead and run it. So to prove to you that, well, everything that we have, all of our eight characters here, and I'll treat them as integers so that we get an actual value here of zero, that we can print them out uh, and they should all be zero initialized. And then I'll go ahead and set the memory here, reviewing memset, which we saw previously here, and set each of those values to 65, which will be either an uppercase A, or in this case, I'm just going to print out the actual integer value stored in the character, which will be 65. So with that said, let's go ahead and just run this here. I'm going to use GCC here, compile our program here. Uh, now we do have a, a function here, which I'll <laughs> bring back in a moment here. So just ignore that for now. And we'll go ahead and see that this is our first printout here in which we zero initialized all of our memory here from the calloc function. And then we went ahead and used memset, which we learned about previously, which was setting each of the eight bytes to the value 65 here. Okay, just to show you that it's set to something different, and this will be useful for our example later. Okay, so that's all the real takeaway is with this particular memory allocation function that we can just zero initialize things. Now we might pay a tiny cost to actually zero initialize. That's why most of the time you'll see folks just use malloc and then set the values because then this is just sort of a uh, extra step to zero things out. But again, depending on what type of application you're designing where you might want some additional safety, it might be a nice thing to do to actually just zero out that memory.
Okay, so that's the first function that I wanted to look at that we haven't previously seen in this series. Let's go ahead and look at the next one, which is going to be realloc. And for this one, what it does is it attempts to change the size of the allocation, and it copies as much of the old data that'll fit inside of the new allocation here. Okay, so what exactly does that mean for us here uh, when we're doing this resizing? Well, again, this is sort of something that happens to be very useful for data structures. So let me go ahead and just illustrate here with our previous example, where we have eight bytes of information. And that's just what I'm going to call our array. And let's go ahead and split this into eight blocks here of memory and just fill in the zeros. We'll imagine that we used C alloc here. And then when I realloc eight bytes here, and let's just go ahead and see how we do that in our man page. So let me go ahead and exit that. Let's go to realloc. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here so we can see the function. Well, let's see the, the interface first, which is going to take in the pointer and then the actual, the new size that we want, the new allocation. Now this could be smaller or larger, okay? So let's say, for example, if I wanted to, uh, and this will be scenario one here, if I wanted to reallocate um, and then the pointer that I'm going to take in here, so let me just actually put this as a parameter here, I'll take in the eight bytes pointer, and then I might want to size it to just four, okay? So that'll just give me, or, or reallocate our original uh, memory here and just take these first four elements here. And now this pointer eight bytes points to this smaller block of memory here. Okay, and then it's going to take care of managing uh, what actually happens. Let's go ahead and confirm that um, by meaning, you know, what happens to this data here. Okay, let's go ahead and read the documentation and see if we can figure that out here. That's going to uh, change the size of the memory block pointed to by the bytes, okay? The contents will be unchanged, so we're still going to have zeros here. We're not doing anything, or maybe if there were other numbers in here, like 10, for instance, those would still remain, okay? Uh, so that's not any problem there. Uh, if the new size is larger than the old size, okay, then that memory will not be initialized, okay? So let's go ahead and look at scenario two here as we're covering this. Scenario two, I'm going to realloc this time our array, eight bytes, and let's go ahead and do 16. Well, that's going to give us an array that looks like this with 16 uh, boxes in it. I need to just subdivide all these here. Subdivide, subdivide, until I get 16. And again, that's going to copy all of these contents, the first eight here, so zero. And there we are, first eight. And then who knows what's in this memory here? It could be one, two, three, four, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever here, okay? Um, so we don't know exactly uh, what's going to be in this memory here. I'm just adding in random, you know, numbers here, 32, 20, you know, whatever happens to be in this memory um, at any given time here, okay, for these last eight elements, because originally we had eight, and now I'm saying, hey, size this to be 16 bytes, okay? So that's the second scenario um, of what happens here, okay? Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at um, an example here, just so you can see concretely, and we'll look at scenario number two. Now, with scenario number one here, where we're reallocating to a smaller size, again, sort of trimming our array. Again, you might be wondering what, what happens to these bytes. Do they just stay here? Do they get reused? Well, that's really up to your actual memory allocator. Um, so the actual uh, sort of memory allocation data structure that Malik's based off of on how these bytes will either get reused or if they'll get wasted and have fragmentation. Again, that's going to be up to the allocator to figure out. Maybe they'll just be marked as free. So then if I do, you know, a small allocation, say of one byte, for instance, maybe it'll take one of these bytes. Um, again, it just sort of depends on the, the strategy. So just wanted to cover that a little bit on strategy one. But anyways, let's go ahead and look at strategy number two here, or I reallocate to a bigger block. And this is often the case where I would do something like this. Again, if I want to implement some sort of um, dynamic array structure that can resize, I can just do that with realloc here. Okay. So again, in code, what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, okay, here's our original pointer, eight bytes. Let's reallocate it. Now it's going to be 16 and let's print out this whole array. Now, remember we had put 65s into our array. That was this print off here. So let's again, see what happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile. We'll ignore that warning for now and rerun. And we can see that we have 65s here 
and I happen to get zeros here, okay? Let's see, if I run this program enough times, maybe I'll get a little bit of noise here. Um, it looks like it is uh, zeroing out uh, the actual memory here, which is nice, but again, that uh, might not be the case, okay? So again, if I bring in the terminal to just highlight that, again, uh, if the new size is larger than old size, the added memory will not be initialized. Again, sometimes it's zero, but we can't uh, guarantee that, okay? <laughs> that's that's why if we want to guarantee that, we learned about the cialloc function to do this. Um, so maybe we'll get lucky a little bit later and it will um, you know, initialize to something else. But for now, we get to eight zeros there. But I just want to stress that point. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and look at uh, our next um, function here. And this one's called uh, alloc A or aloca is usually uh, how I've heard it said. Um, and this time what we're doing is we're allocating memory on the stack. Okay, so memory will be reclaimed when the scope leaves. Um, and oftentimes we have to be a little bit careful because we only have a limited amount of stack space. So let me go ahead and show you what this means here. Uh, if we run the command uh, limit, uh, which you may or may not have on Linux, but I think for Mac users, if you do limit, uh, that'll work. Uh, for other, uh, if you are on Linux, you can try uh, ulimit uh, dash a to print out all the different uh, parameters. And let me make this bigger. Um, you'll see what your actual stack size is. Remember, stack memory is the memory that's automatically allocated for you. We've covered that a little bit in this series. Um, so again, that means every time you're calling a function, you have a temporary for the parameters, all the local variables count towards this limit. This is your limit here. It's about uh, 8,192 uh, kilobytes here. So, you know, eight, eight megs or so on this particular system, sometimes seven megabytes. This, this can uh, vary operating system to operating system. There's different ways you could set this if you needed to. Uh, but that's about the rough amount of space that you're doing. So uh, if I go into our program, for instance, um, here, just somewhere in main, and let's just say, again, uh, that I try to do something crazy like memory here and put in some really big number here, um, this might seg fault, okay? Now, if I actually access something here, again, let's ignore that uh, warning for a moment. Yeah, in this case, we did. We, we ran out of actual stack space, okay? Um, so that is why we use heap memory. That's the whole point of us. Uh, instead, where we'd come back here and say, okay, we need a uh, pointer. Oops, let me make this a, a pointer. And that this needs to be C alloc or malloc, and we allocate on the heap. Okay, so that's what we've learned about as far as stack versus heap memory on this series. But now what I'm introducing here, I'm going to go ahead and show a function here, is this function here, which does allow us to allocate on the stack as normal. Um, we're just being uh, very uh, sort of explicit about it, okay? We're saying that this is a chunk of memory that I want to allocate here. Uh, and what this function is doing is it's taking in some string here. And then what it's doing is saying, okay, well, I want to allocate this string uh, for whatever its length is, plus the null terminating character, copy it to some other uh, location here uh, to print name, which is, again, what I've allocated here. And then I'm just going through and making all of the uh, uppercase uh, letters uh, uppercase here. Now, I think I'm missing the uh, two upper uh, function here, so which is in the uh, C type library. So let me go ahead and uh, include that here ctype.h, and that should get rid of our uh, warning just so we have a complete example. And again, that's what I'm doing in this loop here, uh, just uppercasing all the characters here. Okay, so this would be a use of aloca. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this example uh, does here. And again, a, a reason that you might be doing this versus just creating an array is, you know, if I really explicitly want to treat this as, right, a pointer to a chunk of memory here, uh, which is what I'm doing, you know, that's that's a loca here, okay? So, uh, you know, maybe again, I'm going to call some other function that's taking in this chunk of memory here, but I do eventually want it to be reclaimed once we've cleared this function here. Okay, so that's, that's the use here. Now, I could have done this as a heap allocation, um, and then I then I just would have had to remember it uh, to, to free here. So that's really what it's saving me here. Aloka is going to free whatever memory is pointed to here when we leave scope, just like our regular static memory, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and uh, run this, and then we'll look at the Aloka uh, page here and see how this works here, okay? Now you can go ahead and see that this is making <laughs> whatever string that we passed in here, uh, lowercase mic, a uh, couple spaces, and then um, uh, 
this function processing it and just making it uh, uppercase mic here. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and end by looking at Aloka here, just to go ahead and show you uh, what it's doing. Function allocates some amount of size on the stack frame of the caller. Uh, and again, temporarily freeze when this function is called. Now, again, if you might have some memory that you're playing around with, or you just want a chunk of memory for a function, where again, you don't know what the input is, but you almost want to use that as a limiting range, uh, that could again be another reason to use uh, Aloka. Okay. Some folks say it's quite a dangerous function and you should just be using, you know, stacks or if you're just creating arrays i actually somewhat like this function because that's clear what you're doing allocating on the stack and it frees itself which is nice um, so it is sort of a a special purpose uh, allocator in that way of just working with uh, stack memory and we like working on the stack because stack memory is uh, quite fast uh, but now you at least know about it it can make some of these decisions on your own if you want to start incorporating this in your code all right, folks, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson learning about uh, three new memory allocation functions, Calic, Realic, and Aloka, uh, and can see some of the differences in how they're used. Now, we've learned about other things like memset, memcopy, malloc, free, of course, uh, memmove, all these different memory functions that you can start to put to work together um, and uh, really do some fun allocation stuff and, and hopefully are getting a handle on memory allocation. Anyway, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and close this off. Thanks for your time and attention. Thanks to our subscribers. Subscribe if you don't want to miss other videos like this. And with that said, we'll see you in the next one very, very soon.